smoke-filled hotel room seems an unlikely setting for the beginning of a story about authority. And yet, <coughs> in these modest surroundings, <coughs> an important new political party was formed. <coughs> The panacea party of political prestidigitation quickly rose to national prominence by taking its message directly to the people. Hello, friends. Pushy government giving you the blahs? Well, have we got a cure for you. The panacea party promises a better way. <laughs> Give us your vote on election day and we guarantee that afterwards we'll leave each and every one of you completely alone. Do exactly as you please without interference from meddling public servants. Get government off your backs once and for all. Put us in office and then watch us get lost. <laughs> Sound great? Right. Campaigning vigorously, give us your vote on election going out to meet the people. <laughs> the Panacea Party won the support from many different groups. On election day, it was Panacea by a landslide. And as promised, the new government stayed out of the people's hair. But that meant that now there was nobody official to distribute important national resources. Where's my kazoo? I, I want my, my yo-yo. Or even take responsibility for cleaning up the streets. you. <laughs> While most people behave themselves, a lot did exactly as they pleased. The bus drivers, for instance, didn't even follow a schedule. Sometimes they just leave early. Things weren't working out exactly as expected. All this led to plenty of arguments. A good many things were getting worse instead of better. Much worse. Merchants tried to cheat their customers. And customers tried to cheat the merchants. People had to spend a lot of time defending themselves and their property. Now that the government was out to lunch, no new laws were being made to protect the people. And nobody was left to enforce the old one. Well, it didn't take the people long to realize that things were already way out of hand. Something had to be done, and soon. It seemed to many of the people that they had really gotten into a mess. So, in an effort to straighten things out, a group of concerned citizens got together to try to figure out what should be done. After lots of talking, the problem became obvious. Finally, someone suggested a possible solution. What we need here is a benevolent despot, a kind, considerate person who will know how to take care of us and tell us what to do. Yes, sir, no doubt about it. Yeah, right. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. We'll just let the old fingers do the walking. Ah, here it is. No, no, over here, that's it. Hello, Power Unlimited and Domestic Help. We have an opening for a benevolent despot, and I was wondering if you could send some people over for interviews. Thursday? That'll be fine. Thank you very much. The first to be interviewed was Field Marshal Gung Ho, who found himself in the embarrassing position of being an unemployed dictator. Whoops. Next up was Mr. Marvin Gardens. One and two and three and A four. local phys ed coach. But the one everyone agreed was the best was Dorothy Dujour, a smart, efficient businesswoman who had built a huge canned soup empire. Try 
Try a little of my bean and barley. It's delicious. The Concerned Citizens presented Ms. Dujour to the rest of the people, who gladly accepted her as their new leader. Yay! Yay. 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 We like her. And the people gave Ms. Dujour authority to do whatever she thought necessary to straighten out the country's problems. And even some ideas about how things could be made better. Ms. Dujour listened to the suggestions, but politely refused the advice. No thanks, kids. I'd rather do it myself. You've made me the benevolent despot here. So just relax and let me make all the important decisions. And so Ms. Dujour came up with the changes she thought necessary and read her new laws to the people. Then she appointed John Constable to be chief of police and instructed him to organize a police force to make sure all her rules were obeyed. Prudence Juris, a highly respected legal eagle, was assigned, along with her assistants, the job of explaining what Dorothy's rules meant and handing down sentences to those folks who were bound to break one sooner or later. 30 days. After all this had been done, Dorothy Dujour rested. And she had a big bowl of chicken gumbo soup and knew that it was good. Not all problems were solved right away. Pee you. The road back to peace and order was a trifle rocky. But gradually things began to get straightened out. Ah, how sweet it was. School days, school days, dear old golden rule days. Yes, it soon became clear that Dorothy Dujour's plan was working. Seems okay, doesn't it? Yup. Now, instead of leaving early, <laughs> buses ran on schedule. Following the rules meant that traffic moved better and there were fewer accidents. Arguments were settled in a fair, impartial, and sensible way. 30 days, 15 for each of you. People could sleep at night without having to worry about their houses being robbed. They knew the police would be on their job. <laughs> of course, it wasn't all peaches and cream. Sticking to the rules also meant you couldn't always do exactly what you wanted. Sometimes there seemed to be just too darn many rules. And getting the right person for the job was sometimes a tough thing to do. George! And there were some people who just plain gave all the responsibility to Dorothy. We don't have to worry about anything anymore. Well, we just let Dorothy take care of it. On the whole, however, Dorothy Dujour's brand of authority seemed to be working quite well. And now, the one you've been waiting for all evening, the Benevolent Despot of the Year Award goes to Dorothy Dujour. Congratulations, Dorothy. But even though most people realized there were many benefits to be gained from following Dorothy's rules, some citizens had a feeling of uneasiness. Well, it's true that things have been going pretty well, but it's an awful lot of power to give just one person. I sure hope we don't regret it later on. It was in the middle of summer when everyone was into cold soups that the legislature introduced the now famous one soup rule. From now on, my brand of soup will be the only one allowed inside the country. Oh boy, will this ever make me rich. The people were shocked. It's just the summer heat. She can't really mean it. But she did. Police, open up 
in there. This is Mrs. Murphy's cream style corn chowder. You know it's illegal to have any brand of soup other than Dorothy's in your house. Stop! You can't do this to us! Quiet, dearie. You can tell it to the judge. That's the story, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendants guilty as charged. But, but what happened to Prudence Juris and John Constable? Why is Dorothy doing their jobs as well as her own? This case is closed. And that's how things stood. One day, a group of concerned citizens presented some very fine ideas to Dorothy about how the country could be ruled more fairly. We think you've made a few mistakes. And there are also some things you've overlooked, Dorothy. We have some suggestions we'd like to make. But Dorothy wouldn't listen. Darlings, nobody's perfect. I'm the benevolent despot here. Nobody tells me what to do. You hired me to do a job, so just relax and don't worry about a thing. So the concerned citizens told the rest of the people about their experience with Dorothy. And they realized that maybe they had made a few mistakes themselves. Sure, we made some mistakes, but, but that doesn't mean she has the right to act like some sort of queen, you know? So the people sent messages to their benevolent despot. They told her she had better watch her step. Because if she didn't comply with their wishes, they could take her out of office just as easily as they had put her in. A petition was signed by all the people and nailed to Dorothy's door. Dorothy was very happy. She loved getting mail. But she sure didn't like what she read. Who do they think they are? I've been hired to make decisions because I know what's best for them. And what's with this crummy paper? I'm their fearless leader. A at least they could have sent a candy gram. Dorothy immediately went on TV to give the nation a piece of her mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy. There's been a change in the weather. There's been a change in the sea. And if you look, I think you'll find there have been some changes in me. From now on, things are going to be different around here. I've canceled all future elections and appointed myself to a lifelong term as benevolent despot. I've also made a few new rules. First, no one will be allowed to say anything nasty about my government. Second, everybody will have to eat a bowl of alphabet vegetable soup for lunch and two bowls of chicken noodle for dinner. And if you don't, it's straight off to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. And third, everybody will have to send me a quarter. Because I want to build a little monument to myself. As you can well imagine, the people were not overjoyed to hear about this turn of events. But they weren't exactly sure what to do either. There was a lot of talk about kicking Dorothy out of office. But some people, like the wise old scholar Buford Treadwell, didn't think this would solve the problem. Dorothy did a pretty good job until now, but that's what sometimes happens when you give people too much power. It could have happened to anyone. It's as much our fault as hers. But what did we do wrong? And even Professor Buford Treadwell had to agree that that was one tough question. 
It looked like it was time for some concerned citizens to get on the stick and try to figure out what could be done.